to install mysql go to the browser and i'm going to search for mysql or sql i'm going to click on this and in this link there is something called downloads i'm going to click on this i'm going to scroll down and look for mysql community gpl downloads i'm going to click on this and here you would have many different options out of all this you would look for the mysql installer for windows this is the word you have to look for on the page now once i have this this is again i'm doing the installation for windows the community edition installation on the windows here i'm going to select the latest available version so here i'm installing 8.0.41 based on the time you're watching this video the version might get upgraded you can select the highest available version here and here i'm selecting microsoft windows because this is my operating system here you have two different options windows x86 32-bit msi 32 bit msi this also has a 64 version i'm going to show you but again here it has got something called web community and here it has got something called installer community so which one to choose from so web community has certain web components and this is more like a desktop installation and if you see the mb is also larger i'm going to select this one the below one which says mysql installer community without the word web i'm going to hit on download now the download would take certain time after this you come to this particular page okay the download has not started yet you have to click on no thanks just start my download you can sign up but here i'm going to skip it i'm going to simply say no thanks just start my download once i click the download has begun let's wait for the download to complete once the download is completed i need to click on this my sql installer you might get a user control prompt click on it okay and this is what it will appear now here in this one my sql installer there are multiple options because i wanted to do a custom installation and see where it's getting installed and what i'm installing i'll go with the custom installation manually select the product that should be installed on the system and i'm going to hit on next on this page you have got three different sections mysql server application and documentation i'm going to click on this plus sign mysql server i'm going to select on the plus sign mysql server 8.0 and i'm going to select the x64 version this is what i was talking about so 8.0.41 x64 version i'm going to install and then i'm going to minimize this and i will go to the application and in the application i need the workbench similar way I'm going to click on the plus sign and select the latest available version here 8.0.41 x64 hit on this arrow then minimize this the next thing you have under the application is my sql shell i'm going to click on this similar way i'm going to select the highest available version of the cell okay now what is this workbench workbench is your ui uh, on which you will be working the user interface and this uh, mysql shell is more like a command line prompt where you will be working okay so these are the three things i have installed documentation i am avoiding so these are the three important things what we need and there is also something called mysql router for the moment i don't need it so i'll just go with these three products enable the select feature page to customize product features um, so leave it as it is i'm going to hit on next and then these are your products ready to install i'm going to hit on execute and all of this will be installed so let the execution complete for me it took almost like 5 to 10 minutes and the installation is complete here i'm going to hit on next and here it says mysql server 8.0.41 product configuration we now walk through a configuration wizard for each of the following products okay okay fine just hit on next uh, now here it will have certain things development computer server computer dedicated computer so you should go with the development computer if you are using your personal laptop this is a development computer and many other applications will be installed on it a minimal amount of memory will be used by this one if you keep it as server server application will running on this computer choose this option for web or application server so we are not anyways going for this 
dedicated computer the computer dedicated to running the mysql database server only so of, of course not so we'll go with the development computer and these are the default options we would leave it as it is 3306 x protocol 330036 open windows firewall ports so these are the default configuration required i'm going to leave as it is hit on next next is it is telling you use a strong password encryption for authentication so keep it as the recommended one i'll leave it as it is and hit on next here it is asking for the setting up the password the word you will hear mysql root password root meaning admin root means admin so here you have to set up a password a strong password is recommended i am going to set my password and i am going to retype the password and then once it is done it says week you can have a strong password but i'll leave it as it is at the moment and then i am going to hit on next the add user create mysql user accounts for users and applications assign a role to the user so currently i don't need that so i'm going to hit on next window services configure mysql server as a window service and the window service name will be mysql 80 you will be able to see it in your uh, system startup and you will be able to see in your task manager this is the name uh, standard system account custom user account so leave all the things as it is hit on next server file permission so if you see mysql installer can secure the server data directly by updating the permission of files folders located at c drive program data mysql mysql server 8.0 data so this is where inside your program data folder things are there so yes grant full access to the user running windows service if applicable and administrator group only so leave it as it is hit on next now all this configuration has to be set up writing configuration file updating windows firewall rules everything that you have selected and i'm going to hit on execute all the ports everything was there in the previous window now all the setups has to complete okay so the execution has completed now i'm going to click on finish and now uh, my sql server a dot product configuration hit on next again and here it is saying installation has completed the installation procedure has been completed start mysql workbench after setup as i said workbench is a ui user interface for mysql and mysql shell is a command line prompt so keep it as it is and hit on finish and then you can see the mysql shell has started and this is the workbench the user interface of mysql workbench has started just after this the very important task is to set the environment variable now what is this environment variable i'll let you know let's say i'm going to open the command prompt i have installed sql now let me type a command mysql hyphen hyphen version what i'm saying mysql hyphen hyphen version i have typed if i hit on enter mysql is not recognized why it is happening because you have not told the system where the executable files are present if you want to run a command on your command prompt windows command prompt you have to tell the windows where the executable files are present now for this what you have to do simply hit on windows and type environment variable so this is click on environment variable and in this one you see under system variable there is something called path so you have to tell the path where the executable files are there for mysql so you have to click on edit so in this one here you have to hit on new and paste the path now where the files are let me show you let's go to this pc c drive program files and then inside this you would see something called mysql there are three folders you are going to click on mysql server and then there is something called bin and this is where your executable exe files are there all the executable files dlls and everything's are there i need to copy this path now let's go back to the environment variable click on new and here you have to paste the path now what this environment variable will of help is the command prompt knows where the executable files for my sqls are present and then i'm going to click on okay i'm going to click on okay and i'm going to click on okay three times now see the magic now if i open command prompt 
okay this is the windows command prompt and here i am typing the command mysql hyphen hyphen version so now it is recognized and it told you mysql version 8.0.41 for windows 64 has is available now let us start the windows server let me maximize how do you start the windows uh, sorry mysql server now for this all you have to do simply type mysql and then your user you remember the admin user was root and then hyphen p stands for password hit on enter it will ask you to enter the password let me enter the password now you can see it said welcome to my sql monitor commands end with so and so your mysql connection id is so and so so it's all got started now the mysql server is running let's see how to get started with my sql first of all all the things which were open previously i'm just trying to close it so that if you have to start fresh how do you start it type my sql and then there are two things my sql shell is this one we don't need i'm going to close that and the other one is my sql workbench so shell and workbench so i need the workbench so let's open it this is how the instance would look like now by default you would have a mysql connection if you click on it it is going to prompt you connect to mysql server you have to enter the password and this is the password you have created during the installation so i'm going to enter the password and then you can also hit on save password for the vault and click on ok now for now i'm leaving it as it is and this is how a query is going to open the query table open you might see it blank this is how the query table is going to open this is one way let me close this in case you do not see this my sql connection you can click on this plus sign you can give it a name for example i'm going to give it a name called local local connection something like this now once i give a name then there is something called a password here you can enter a password and click on okay and i'm going to click on test connection so you can see it said successfully made the mysql connection information related to this connection so and so so this is how you can click on ok and you see a connection you can also open like this it's up to you how you like to manage and open your connection and this is also here you can write your queries once you are on the mysql workbench couple of things you might be interested is click on preferences and the font and colors if you would like to increase the font see it initially you might see value 10 here i have increased it to 20 just to make sure the whatever i write here appears little bigger and better now the very first thing here we are going to learn is creating a database now where do you find if the databases are already available look at something here called schemas you can click on the schemas and see if there are any databases currently available by default you see something called sys and there are few things here tables view stored procedure and functions these are the default ones no need to do anything with them and leave it as it is they are required for the mysql now looking at the screen you see there are many things now i don't need the sql additions box here so here you can click on this small icon and reduces so now you only have this query where you will be writing your queries the very first query we are going to write is to create database now create database you have to simply say create and then you have to say database and provide name of the database for example i'm going to say my first db or test db for example test db after you have written your first query the my the sql query only thing you have to do is click on this execute the selected portion of the script okay click on this and then you will see create database test db 
one row affected that means it has created on the schema on the left hand side if you refresh this button you will see your test database has been created and these are the by default you get it tables views stored procedure and functions all of this we will learn but right if you see if you go to the table the table is actually blank there won't be anything because we just created a database and it will have its own set of things a database supposed to have tables views stored procedure and functions by default this four sections you get